ان الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبد الله ورسوله ارسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه we begin by praising allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise him because he is worthy of praise and his worthiness of praise comes from his names and attributes which show us his perfection subhana and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to assist us into our in our day to day affairs and to assist us into succeeding in succeeding in this life and the afterlife and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from the evils within ourselves and the evil consequences of our actions and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his peace and blessings upon the last and final messenger upon his wives his companions and his family and all those who follow his sunnah until the end of time amin ya ayuhan nasu taqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalan kathiran wa nisaa wa taqu allah alladhi tasaaluna bihi wal arham inna allah kana alaykum raqiba يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما and we remind one another to be people of taqwa and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to assist us in making us and becoming among the muttaqin amin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the end of surah al-ahzab the 33rd chapter Inna aradna al-amanata ala as-samawati wal-ardi wal-jibal fa-abayna an yahmilnaha wa ashfaqna minha wa hamalaha al-insan In this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he has presented the amana and the amana here is what uh, a synonymous word that we use in Arabic is called taklif and what that means is responsibility some of which is in fact all of which is religious in an, in, a, in to a certain extent and that is religion in our conception in our understanding is something that advises us guides us teaches us and discusses all aspects of life no matter how grand or how private no matter how public or how small and thus the amana that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is presenting is the amana of responsibility this amana of this trust and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he presented it to the heavens and the heavens is massive and grand we study it day in day out there are sciences and fields within sciences dedicated entirely to studying the heavens around us and above us and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also presented it to the earth as well as the mountains the earth is big and the mountains are symbols of, of strength they are strong and they are tall and they are powerful but each one of them refused to accept this amana this trust this responsibility but the human being accepted it now the common interpretation of this verse is that the verse is alluding to the the irresponsible nature of the human being that the human being tends to really neglect or not give thorough thought to what they are accepting and what they are doing and thus the verse is essentially reprimanding the human being for their misplacing or misunderstanding of the demands and the responsibility of this trust however upon asking a simple question we find that this interpretation has gaps has holes in it and the question is the following or the the not the question but the the the, the fact this fact is completely changes this interpretation and that is we as human beings were an asked whether we want to take this responsibility or not we didn't have a choice whether we are referring to adam alayhi salatu wassalam our father or we're referring to ourselves as individuals no one came to us and said this is the responsibility do you want to accept it or not it wasn't a voluntary choice 
but rather it was placed upon us. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly says in the Quran, Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. I am placing on this earth a successor. I am appointing someone upon this earth. And thus this verse isn't reprimanding the human being, but actually praising the human being. In that the heavens, despite their size and their massiveness, and the earth, despite its size and its massiveness, and the mountains, despite their size and their strength and their power, could not bear this burden. But rather the human being is capable of bearing this burden, is capable of fulfilling this trust, of honoring this responsibility. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the human being certain abilities, certain faculties, certain capabilities that gives us the ability to do this. Such as our intellect, such as our emotions, such as our ability to learn and to grow, to repent, to change our ways. Allah sent messengers to teach us. Allah sent down revelation to guide us. He gave us certain tools like dua and Allah promises to assist the human being. And thus this verse is initially praising the human being, showing its, their uniqueness in relation to all that exists around the human being. But where is the problem of the human being? Isn't that they have this trust? Isn't that they have this responsibility? It's not about their inability or their ignorance upon, or it's not their inability to fulfill this responsibility or their recklessness in taking it. But rather as the verse concludes, إِنَّهُ كَانَ ظَلُومًا jahuda. Human beings are consistently and often unjust. And thus, despite having this trust, this responsibility, they are unjust in what privileges come with that responsibility. Or jahuda, or they are ignorant of the responsibility. And they're always thinking about something else, ignoring the responsibility, not dedicating enough time to understand the demands of this responsibility. This is where human beings fail, by being unjust or by being ignorant. So when we look at Mr. Cruz, as he flees, he flew away, thinking he'll be uncaught. He did an injustice to the responsibility on his shoulders as an elected official. This is the problem. Or when human beings are so concerned with monetary gain, with the material, with satisfying their shahawat, their desires and their whims, and they begin to ignore the responsibility. And this is the problem of modernity. This is the problem of our era. For those of us who have a little bit more years, you have seen, you have observed, you have witnessed the drastic change of the way human beings engage one another. When you were younger, family was a lot more important than what it is now. You wouldn't dare speak back to your, to your parents. You wouldn't dare speak back to your elders. Your neighbor wouldn't dare transgress, or maybe on very rare occasions, but no one would dare transgress the sanctity, the respect and the honor of their neighbor. Yet, fast forward a few decades, where's the respect? What happened? Where did this all go? Well, it goes back to these two things. Human beings are becoming much more unjust and human beings are becoming much more ignorant specifically about this responsibility. Well, we can also say the moral side of the human being. Yes, we have made massive advancements in knowledge, massive advancements, advancements in natural sciences, massive advancements in technology. Yet, despite the easier lives that these give us, we find that we are becoming much more distant from our humanness. Why is that? Why is that? Well, one way of addressing it, one way of looking at it, is when we look at a simple, the simple or the way we engage the natural sciences itself. Why do we study physics? 
Why do we study medicine? Why do we study engineering, mathematics, any of these sciences? Why do we study them? To learn how the world works so that we can take control of it and manipulate it in ways that benefit us. Now that in of itself isn't unethical, but rather what we find is the way we engage nature, the world around us, is coterminous and heavily impacts and influences the way we treat one another. So what you find is as society began to become more immersed in this scientific way of understanding the world, you find that more and more the ethical side of the human being is marginalized and excluded in the way we behave with one another. And we see the, the, huge, ma the huge effects of that in our current time over the past two, three decades. And thus we need to reacquaint ourselves with this notion of the amana, the trust. What has Allah entrusted us with? He entrusted us with His creation and utilize the creation for our best interests. But there are certain conditions that we must abide by. There are certain rights that these objects have. There are certain responsibilities that come with these objects, among which are the spiritual responsibilities. If Allah has blessed you with something from nature, like a garden that provides you with various fruits and vegetables, then we have a responsibility to say Alhamdulillah. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with excess wealth, a little bit more or a lot more than what we need for our day-to-day -day lives, to live a middle, upper middle class life, a comfortable life, then Allah and His Messenger have made it clear that we have a responsibility to use the excess wealth in a way that is ethical and moral. And one example of that is the Prophet ﷺ tells us that a believer is not one who goes to sleep while his neighbor is hungry. It is not a, simply a virtuous act to make sure that your neighbor is sleeping with a, with, with a meal, has had a meal that day. It is a moral obligation. It is part of the amana. And thus we as human beings, and especially as Muslims, the more we are able to engage this side of our humanity, the ethical, the moral side, then the more ability we will have to contribute to the progress of humanity, to sway humanity back on course to living a healthy life, away from the, seemingly dis the seeming destruction that scientists continue to tell us about because of global warming, among other things. The, eco the economists tell us about in terms of the discrepancy and the massive wealth gap between the upper and the lower classes. The more we are able to reintroduce, rediscover, reincorporate the ethical side of our amana, our responsibility entrusted upon us by Allah and His Messenger, then the more we as Muslims will become relevant to humanity at the global level. Because if there's one thing humanity is becoming desperate for, is, be is so thirsty for, if there's one thing that humanity today at the global level needs immediately and urgently, then it is the side of compassion, the ethical side, where despite me having the ability to take a lot of wealth, and I have the power and the influence to do that. I will not because of my moral obligation, the amana, upon my back. I understand that even if I have the ability to do something that is in my personal interest, I will not focus my, on my interest at the expense of the interests of other people. I will not focus on my own privilege unless my privilege will help others become more privileged as well. This is huge and this is very important. And we as Muslims in America, Alhamdulillah, we are generally on this path. And a shout out to our brothers and sisters in Texas 
who opened their masajid in the humanitarian crisis that the people there are facing today. Who opened their doors to allow people to use the masjid's internet to communicate with people because the internet is out. Who opened their masjid and turned on the heaters so that people whose homes have no electricity can go and find shelter. Who opened their masjid as a source of collecting food, organizing food and distributing it to people in need. Going to them and not simply waiting for people to come to them. This is huge because it will make Muslims the ethical leaders in a time where there is a huge demand for morals and ethics. A huge demand to revive the humanness of humanity. This is an amana, and we must view it not simply as Muslims acting virtuously, but also as Muslims acting upon the amana that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put on our shoulders. As the ummah al-wasat, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes us, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ Like that we made you, O Muslims, ummatan wasata. The nation that is most just, that is most ethical, that is most moral, that is most moderate. Why? Allah didn't just make us like this for our own privileges and our own enjoyment. لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ Allah made us this way so that we become one of the meanings here, so that we become the leaders of humanity. And by leading, I don't mean it in our current way, the way we think of politics today. We're leading the world, meaning we are policing the world and stopping people from doing things that might impact the economy back home. But, latter, but, but rather leaders in ethics and morals, not in terms of the material and material gain. This is who we are meant to be. This is our amana. And our success in this life and the afterlife will be commensurate to our ability to fulfill this amana, this responsibility upon our shoulders. But this responsibility isn't simply at the human level, isn't only at the societal, the global level, but also at the level of our intimate and nuclear family. When we look at our spouse, not simply as someone I chose to be my spouse. Someone I accepted to be my spouse because I think they will do things for me. They will buy me the things I want. Or she, they will cook for me the food that I want. Not simply that. But rather, understanding that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala termed, called the marriage, a contract of marriage, mithaqan uh, ghalidah a heavy agreement it is heavy because Allah's name is invoked it is heavy because we are now responsible we have an amana to treat our spouse in a way that is commensurate to our ethics and our morals as Muslims in a way that centers the fact that this spouse of mine is an amana a responsibility that Allah has trusted me with and if I betray that responsibility, then in all reality, I have betrayed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is heavy. But we are able to do it as the verse has told us. We are able to fulfill it because we have the assistance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have access to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help. We have dua, we have the Quran, we have the sunnah, we have the prophets to look at, to, look at, to learn from and to become the best that we can possibly be. We have an amana Allah has trusted us with and that is a noble thing. And what this demands is for us to get out of the perception where it's about my material gain. It's about the gain in the material world irrespective of how that impacts people around me whether immediately around me or across the globe. Because in the globalized world what happens here affects what happens everywhere else in the, on earth. And thus our behaviors, the way we engage nature, the way we engage the economy, the way we engage politics, doesn't simply affect us directly. It affects people across the world. And we know this to be the truth. This is our responsibility. We are capable of doing it. And it is an honor, honorable and noble responsibility. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq to fulfill the responsibility. Aqulu qawl hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum.
الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولا أما بعد Going back to our responsibility towards our family members Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala embodies the perfect names and attributes and thus it serves as a model of how we as human beings can become the best by emulating Allah's names to the best of our human capacity and thus when we look at other people when we engage the economy when we engage physics and science when we engage medicine and our patients it must be through the moral lens of benevolence and mercy why because Allah is the benevolent and the most merciful when we engage whatever part of our lives we are engaging it must be with graciousness and generosity because Allah is al karim the most gracious and the most generous and thus we must apply and incorporate this ethical side of the human being in all that we do whatever we are doing is whatever what we are doing is and going back to the spouse our relationships with our spouse being generous with your spouse is part of fulfilling the amana of the amana that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in terms of our marriage to be generous with our spouse and generosity isn't exclusive to money this is a common misconception it's not just about buying your spouse gifts and giving them money generosity is also with your words saying a kind word is a sadaqah as the Prophet ﷺ tells us because when you, are gen when you are generous with your words you are bringing happiness to the other person you are bringing optimism to the other person whether that's your spouse or your children or some random person and generosity and graciousness is also in your facial uh, gestures and your bodily gestures because a, a smile to another person is a sadaqah, a charity. This is the amana on our shoulders. We have everything we need to fulfill it. Everything we need to honor it. Everything we need to succeed in this amana. But where human beings fall off track, where they go astray, and how often they go astray, is when they are unjust with the trust that they have been entrusted with or they are ignorant of it. Allahumma ghfir al-Muslimin wal-Muslimat wal-Mu'minin wal-Mu'minat al-Ahya'i minhum wal-Amwat innaka sami'un qareeb wal-Mujibu al-Da'awat ya Rabbil Alameen Allahumma aslih lana deenana alladhi huwa ismatu amrina wa aslih lana dunyana allati fiha ma'ashuna wa aslih lana akhiratana allati ilayha ma'aduna wa ja'al al-hayata ziyadatan lana fi kulli khayr wa ja'al al-mawta rahatan lana min kulli shar We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our sins, to overlook our shortcomings May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our brothers and sisters who have passed on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help our brothers and sisters who have been persecuted, who are being persecuted and oppressed across the globe for no other reason than that they, than that they believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is their Lord. Wa aqim as